913 WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. That's music by Ian Hendrickson Smith that we're listening to. The track called Don't Explain. Let's get him on air. Ian, are you with me? I'm right here. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for, for your time here today. Let me do a brief intro to the listeners today, and I'll start off by saying five-time Grammy Award-winning saxophonist and flutist Ian Hendrickson-Smith can be seen weeknights on NBC's Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon as part of the house band The Roots. Ian has worked with countless musicians, including Lady Gaga, Bob Dylan, Amy Winehouse, Ed Sheeran. He was a longtime member of Sharon Jones and the Dapkins. Ian and his wife recently opened a new live music venue in Brewster called Uncle Chiefs, which brings top-rated, talented musicians to the Hudson Valley. And with that, a warm welcome to Local Motion, Ian Hendrickson-Smith. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I know you're a busy guy, so uh, we've got a little bit of time to talk to you. So let's get in as much as we can. I always like to say this is your life to my guests. So back it up a little bit with your start and your first introduction to music. I understand you were born in New Orleans and really started out with classical, correct? That's correct. Yeah, my my grandfather gave me a pretty uh, solid introduction to opera and chamber of music and was a big supporter and, you know, bought me uh, lots of cassette tapes back then and bought me my first metronome and, uh, you know, just was, a, was a, um, an, a crucial element in my upbringing in terms of, uh, you know, getting me interested in being an actual musician. Right. And what was your first instrument? Flute. Uh-huh. Yeah. And what, what, how old were you? Uh, regular age, fourth uh, grade, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, starting in school, so you're part of the school band and all of that. Correct. So, so I had I had the good fortune. So we when we left New Orleans, we went to Charlottesville, and then we ended up in State College, Pennsylvania. I had the great fortune to have an incredible teacher, probably still to this date, my most influential teacher. Her name was Diane Gold. Uh, she was with us just until a few years ago, and um, she was a huge part of my life. Um, she really got me from being, you know, just a, your standard, you know, middle school music student to practicing, you know, four to eight hours a day. Wow. Um, pretty much right away, like, she got me that inspired um, and got me that serious about it. And uh, and I obviously, I ran with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she uh, she was instrumental in my upbringing for sure. Wow, really cool. And then in high school is when you founded jazz, discovered yes. jazz. And I should that say was also, that was also her. Oh, really? Um, uh-huh. Angle. Yeah, we were learning um, concertos mm-hmm. at a certain point, and where the at the very end of a thirty minute piece with an orchestra, you, you there's a, the whole orchestra drops out, and there's a there's a unaccompanied cadenza, and so we were playing through it, and uh, you know I was doing well, but but she was she was you know she she explained to me that when that when that music was written, the soloist would actually improvise that cadenza, and I was like I don't know what you mean. So she would show me the chords, and uh, the soloist would improvise a melody based on that chord structure, which is essentially, you know, the the precursor to jazz music in some ways. Mm. Wow. Um, and uh, and she saw me take a. Uh, uh, you know, a, a heavy interest in that. And then she started handing me jazz records. And the very first one was a Cannibal Adderley record called uh, Something Else, which um, is still to, is still to date my favorite jazz record for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that first thing that we're handed, my first jazz uh, witness of a performance was by David Brubeck. So same kind of thing. It always stays with you. And uh, so cool. So after high school, you went to Manhattan School of Music. Was music, like, did you ever think of doing anything besides music, or was it like, nope, this is my path, and this is what I'm doing? Yeah, I, I, I never had a backup plan, ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So you go to Manhattan School of Music, you graduate. What was your degree in? Uh, jazz performance, a very a very useful uh, degree I'm being, I'm being uh you know, sarcastic. It's, it's, of course, it was, it was a great experience and I did learn quite a bit from there. And, um, I did, I do still work with some of my, my friends that I met at, at that school, but never once has anybody said, Hey, can I see your degree in 
you know, your jazz performance to be before they hired me for a job. Right, right, right. And nowadays it's more like, okay, what'd you play? Who'd you play with? That kind of a thing. And, um, yeah. yeah. And you immediately went right into what was like your first gig after graduating Manhattan School of Music? Um, interestingly, uh, my very first gig was with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Wow. Um, I, I, I know, right? So I signed a nine month contract. I ended up only. Uh, completing three months of that contract, it just wasn't uh, the gig wasn't right for me. Uh-huh, yeah. But I became I became very close with the band leader, and and we had a um, I learned a lot from him. His name is Larry O'Brien, um, great guy. And you know I learned a lot about just traveling and how to pack and how to be a professional on the road and and how to survive that that lifestyle. But then right when I got back to the city, I got the phone call from uh, the Charles Mingus Orchestra, who had a residency at um, the Fez at the time. And this would have been like 96. Um, they've, they've, that band has moved around quite a bit since then. But um, that was a uh, uh, heavy experience to go from Glenn Miller to Charles Mingus, which was at that time was packed with just, you know, one heavyweight after another. I certainly had no business being in that band, but it was, um, it was a great experience for the time that I was there. Wow, yeah. Tell me about your first recording session. Oh, jeez. Um, I honestly don't quite remember what my first recording session was. I, I can tell you about my first solo record. But there you I, go. There I remember. You. So my first solo record is uh, is called Up in Smoke, and it was live at Smoke Jazz Club, and I think I recorded it in 99. Yeah. And, um, you know, that was a place where I was hanging out in constantly. I was kind of part of the fabric of that club at that time. And uh, the owner was very kind to me and, and gave me this opportunity to, to play my music and record it. And it ended up becoming a, a release. Um, it came out on Sharp Nine Records, which at the time, it's now defunct, but at the time was, uh, was a very well-respected and, um, you know, uh, did, did, very well, did very good business. So that, you know, that rec- it did really well. I was, it kind of helped put me on the map in yeah. that world. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And um, and some of the names that you worked with, holy moly. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So uh, 2004, you also apparently got a big break with uh, the DAP being the DAP Kings uh, show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's an interesting story. I'll, get, I'll give you the cliff notes. Um, you know, one of the things that I tell my students is, is if you want – a particular gig, like you have to go get it. Mm-hmm. So not that you're trying to like usurp anybody, here, but um, when the Dap Kings, I, I had heard about this band, the Dap Kings, and I was a huge fan of soul music and funk and all that kind of business. Um, and every time the Dap Kings would play, I would show up, I would hang, listen to the music, make sure I got backstage and hang with Sharon, and it was just let them know that I that I love the music and that I was capable and. If they needed somebody, I was there. And then eventually, the phone did ring one day, and, and they, they said, um, "Hey, we, we're in a situation. Can you can you go with us to Montreal today?" Um, today, like, absolutely. Yeah, today. <laughs> and then they're like, "We want you to play. We want you to play baritone sax song." I'm like, "No problem." But I'd never actually played a baritone sax song before. No way. Did I? And I didn't own one, so I had to like <gasps> hang up the phone and hustle a horn. I ran to Midtown, bought a mouthpiece, bought some reeds, bought an neck strap. Um, and then learn the set on the way up to the, you know, the seven hour drive to Montreal. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and it was a huge crowd, like, you know, 20,000 people. <laughs> it's one of those, one of those giant outdoor festivals. And, and, um, and, you know, I did well, I'm sure I didn't nail everything, but I did well and that, well enough for them to call me back. And then the kind of the rest is history. It, 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 probably about a year later, I became a permanent member and, uh, and wow. then, you know, spent a long time with that organization. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what a sad passing of, of Sharon Jones, too. Way too young, and what a talent. What a powerhouse on stage, you know, as you well know, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, beautiful. And then some of the work, and then now talk to me, because you are right now, I think, at 30 Rock. Um, yes, that's correct. About to be on taping The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, we go on. Yeah, we go on in maybe 30 minutes. That's awesome. Is it going to air tonight, Ian? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, every day we tape we tape at five, and then the the show airs that night. Oh my gosh! Do you know who the guest is tonight? Um, I know Tariq Trotter is. Uh, uh, he's you know the, the MC for the Roots. Oh, um, nice. I, I beyond that, I honestly can't remember personally. Um, it's they, every day they send us a rundown, and, and I always look, but it's it's you know we're on show number nineteen hundred or something like that. So yeah. kind of it kind of tends to blur together after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure when I was talking with Anton Fig, you know, from Letterman, he would say the same thing. No idea, no idea. You know, I just show up and I get to be surprised. Um, so talk to me about how you got to that position where you are today. Um, that's a, that's a, um, it's, uh, it's a long winded answer and I'll, I'll give you the cliff notes. So, um, the roots were always a fan of the Dap Kings. In fact, um, the very first roots picnic, which is their annual music festival they put on in Philadelphia every summer. Uh, the Dap Kings were one of the bands they chose. Um, and I had done some occasional work with the, with the roots over the years, like VH1 Diva specials and some, various TV things where they wanted to add a horn section. And then uh, while I was on the road with Amy Winehouse, Quest started coming around a lot because him and Amy were tight. Um, and it was after one of those gigs, he, he pulled me and, and the other two horn players aside and asked us if we wanted to do an Al Green record with, with the Roots. Wow. And of course, we said, of course we said yes. And then we ended up doing, it ended up being like, either 12 or 14. It was a lot of recording sessions for, for one record. We, you know, we, we tracked things a few times and it's just a lot of material. So during those recording sessions, I became very close with uh, the, the band's manager, uh, Rich Nichols, rest in peace. Um, and he, he remembered me from those sessions and, you know, you know, we had a good rapport and the, and the music was great. Then one day uh, I'm laying in bed and my phone rings at like 6.30 a.m., and it's a Philadelphia number. It's 215. And I'm like, well, this has to be somebody. You know, otherwise, I'm not going to answer it. So I pick it up, and it's Rich. And Rich had this real deep voice. He said, uh, he said hey, Chief, you know, I've got this gig here. I don't think you're going to like it, but maybe you want to. So he offered me the financial gig, which, of course, I said yes to. And, and, uh, and now here we are 10 years later. Wow. That's so cool. How'd you get your name, the Chief? How'd you get that? Uh it was an old college nickname that, that kind of just morphed over time. Um, the Dap Kings started calling me Chief, and then uh, the Roots added Uncle onto it because I don't have any kids, and, and most of them do, so I'm like everyone's uncle. Oh, sweet, man. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, now, you moving up, because I know you only have a limited amount of time, and I really want to get into this new club. What made you, with your schedule, say... I want to do this. I want to open this club. Talk to me about the history and how long you've wanted to do that. Sure. Um, it's essentially, it's a 30 year dream um, realized. So it's, I wanted to do this since the day I moved to New York. I've always felt just like innately that I'd be good at it. I have a very, um, very organized uh, approach to life. Um, I take, I'm just like, I live and die by the list. Uh, I'm willing to work myself into, into nothingness, you mm-hmm. know, like just work until, work until I don't sleep. So I, I felt like I, I just had like the makeup of, of a club owner and like, um, I've always had such a great relationship with my friends and, and my, uh, you know, my fellow musicians. I just, I just knew that I, there was a trust there that I could, uh, that I could fall back on. Um, so I, this is actually uncle chief is the, my third attempt at opening a club. So in, I can't remember the exact year, but it was probably 15 years ago, I was looking at moving to Charlottesville and opening a club there. Uh-huh. Cause we looked at like the overall scope of the whole thing and flights and, and, it, and but we ended up not doing it. It just, it didn't work out. Um, and then 12 years ago, I almost opened a club in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. uh, different partner, different investors, the whole thing. And then as we were like putting it all together, I got the call from the Tonight Show and um, obviously decided to put those plans on hold. Right. And it was during the pandemic. And then that, so going back to the broken thing, and it's, it, it did fizzle out because once I, once I stepped aside, it just, the whole thing fell apart, unfortunately. Right. right. Um, but then um, during the pandemic, my wife and I were 
just, you know, sitting there for a year and we started thinking about it and, and, um, you know, it just, it, it, we were, we decided we wanted to go for it and pull the trigger, but we, but we considered moving back to the city to do it in Brooklyn because obviously the, the population center is, is such a, a larger, um, group to draw upon. Mm-hmm. But we decided to take the, the risk and drop it right in the Hudson Valley. We, we live in Brewster. Nice. Um, we know there's a ton of great people there. Yeah. And we, and we realized very quickly that there was a vacuum. There's absolutely nowhere to hang out that, that, that is quite like what we what we created, um, and it's just a very adult atmosphere. We have excellent craft cocktails. Like you can't get a good cocktail up by us. There's mm-hmm. just nowhere to go. And the corridor. I mean, Brewster is so easily accessible to so many different places. Eighty four is right there. You got the Taconic. You can have New York. You've got Connecticut. You've got that little like it's a great place. I mean, location couldn't be better. I think. It's pretty incredible. I mean, and honestly, like when we did our demographic studies, we we dropped a pin at the location of the business and, and kind of drew like a 30 mile slash 30 minute drive circle. And we're like, okay, we, we, we can do it. We think we have enough people to enough like-minded people that are going to want to come to this place. But what we're, what we're finding is, is it's actually further than that. Like we're getting people from white Plains, people from, are driving from Poughkeepsie. So um, we're, we're ecstatic about that, obviously, but um, it, I agree it's a great location. It's the parking is amazing. It's right off the exit, so it's super easy to get on and off the highway. Um, you know, it's it's so far it's been working out great. It's it's a pretty happening place. The website unclechief.com. I'm looking at your calendar um, tonight. You're open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, reservations are requested, required. Talk to me about that system. Just highly recommended is what we say. Yeah. It's not required, but, uh, but you know, on the weekends, these days we're selling out more often than not. So, you know, if you show up for the first set on a Friday, you're most likely not going to get in. Yeah. Unless you have a reservation. Yeah, that's really cool. So tonight you have Kevin Burt. You got Brewster's Millions um, tomorrow night. Now you're um, booking these shows? I am, yes. Awesome. 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 Which, of course... You're getting some great friends of yours that just come up from the city and do their thing. You got Johnny O'Neill, you got Marvin Stam and Mike Holliber Quartet. I love the fact that you're doing brunch on Sundays. Talk to me. It looks like you have a tapas menu. Talk to me a little bit about the food offerings. The food is is American style. I'm sorry, American tapas style food. So it's it's we kind of curated it to 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 match the vibe of the room and the vibe of the music. So, you know, during during the performance, especially on the weekends, it's really dark in there. It's like the candle is your only light source at the table. Love that. So what we didn't want to do is serve these, you know, dramatic plates where you're like sawing at a chicken or, you know, trying to, you know, like dismantle something so you can eat it. We wanted to have everything be like friendly and shareable and delicious and like, and um and just and just matching the decor and the vibe of the room. Right, right. So luck, luckily we found a great chef. His name is Matthew Stein. Um, he lives in New Fairfield, and, and he, he understood our concept, like, directly. Just knew exactly what we were going for. So we've, we've kind of managed to put together these great plates. Um, we don't have a deep fryer, which make, actually makes us feel good that we're not serving up a bunch of fried food. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even though it was the obvious, the obvious call would be to serve up some chicken wings and you know whatever else you can do with a deep fryer, but right, right, uh, we're, we're not we're not doing that, and we don't have a, a griddle either. We're, it's, we're a fully electric kitchen, so um, all the uh, everything that we made, we had to get very creative with with how we were going to execute and and um, and manage to get food out in a timely fashion because everything is based on sets. You know, sure, it's, it's difficult when you're when you're we are a restaurant alone, but we're a restaurant with two one-hour sets. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You really, you really have to, like, time everything, and every, you don't want anybody waiting for food for more than, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Right, right. So it's, it's a challenge. Yeah, no, it is a challenge, and you have to have good wait staff in there, too, to turn everything over to get that all done. Um, that sounds really cool. And your cocktails look pretty amazing on the website. Yeah, they're great. We're, we're very lucky. Our, our bar program was 
designed by our chef's daughter, Nikki Stein, um, who has since moved on to brighter pastures. She got an opportunity to, to run her own place um, about an hour north of New Fairfield. Um, so we're really sad to, to lose her, but she brought this incredible energy and incredible life to, to our bar program. We always knew we wanted to have craft cocktails. Um, we didn't know exactly how we were to execute. Right. But um, she she just showed up and just took over and, and did an amazing job. Um, and so we, we house make all our all our syrups, all our juices are fresh pressed. It's wow. you know, all our mixers, all our mixers are, are the, the absolute highest quality, and um, and they just and you can taste the difference. There's just no question. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So Ian, you've got a couple of gigs happening at your place on the 24th and the 25th. Um, who are you bringing to play with you? I'm bringing um, none other than the, the, the world-renowned, legendary guitar icon, Rodney Jones. Wow. Uh, and if, if, you, if you're not aware of Rodney Jones, I mean, he's played with everybody from Maceo Parker to Lena Horne, Sarah Vaughn, you know, you name it. Like, he's, he's played with pretty much everyone across the board. Man. Um, and I'm, we're very lucky. He lives in Danbury, Connecticut. He's right down the street from us. Um, I, when I was at Manhattan School of Music in from 92 to 96 he was one of my teachers all my friends studied with him um he's you know he's an he's an icon and um very lucky to have him uh at our at our front doorstep and he loves the club you know that it's we're we're such a musician friendly place because it's been built by a musician yeah so we you know we have we we kind of really tried to think through the entire musician experience beyond just you know the standard here's what you're getting paid Right. We're trying to make sure that they 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 get treated like gold, so yeah. they, they have a nice, comfortable green room. They get they get um, you know they get fed and drank just like the guests do, and, and it's um, it's it's been great for us. Anyway, so um, I have Rodney Jones, Pat Bianchi, who is a you know a, one of the premier Hammond organ players of our day, and one of my dearest friends, uh, Joe Strasser, has playing drums with me. Um, it, we we go back thirty years. I mean, uh, he's played on my first, very first record, Up in Smoke. Um, we, we probably played on 15 or 20 records over the years, and uh, he's you know he's great. He, he understands my music and he understands me probably better than any drummer that I've worked with. So you've played on stages all over the world. You're on television every weeknight. How does it feel playing in your own club? Well, um, in a way, I've kind of ruined it for myself because now I don't want to play anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, the stage we built and the, and the acoustics in that room are, uh, you know, in, in my mind, unparalleled. It's, it's like the easiest stage to play. And that's often what the musicians tell me. They're just like, I didn't even have to try. Like the, the, it's, it's, it's well built, you know, it's built by someone that, that really cares about the sound and really cares about the musician's experience because I know I knew if I did that, I would get better performances out of people, and therefore, we would get better recordings, and it just it's trickle down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I love I love playing everywhere, but but I really love playing my own stage. Yeah. I love it. Uncle Chiefs, man, it sounds fantastic. And uh, I, I've, I've known people that have been to your place. I got a text from somebody that went to your place. Rita, have you been there yet? You've got to go. This place is amazing. So um, I can't wait to check it out. Can't wait to check that it out. That is so lovely to hear. I, I you know, I just warms my heart. I love to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I'm avid. I go out once, twice a week, sometimes three times a week for live music in the Hudson Valley. And somebody knew that and texted and it's like, sent me a picture of your stage and how beautiful it looked. And uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, let's let's add this to the list. So I mention you every single week during my musical happening segue because this show is dedicated to music and live music in the Hudson Valley. So um, you will remain on this list forever and ever. Ever, and um, I'm so excited for you. And, you know, there's nothing better than a musician opening his own club because you know what it needs to sound like and you've got these great connections to people. So it really does sound like a perfect union here, you know, um, and I'm very happy for you. So and thank you. Thank you for bringing more music to the Hudson Valley. Well, thank you. And honestly, I feel like we deserve it. We just, like the Hudson Valley deserves a place like this. Like there's, we have such a great community. And, and since we've been open, 
my wife and I have made so many friends that like I'm sure we'll be lifelong friends. They're just beautiful people that we would never have met otherwise. Right, right, right. And now uh, you guys are open Wednesday through Sunday, UncleChief.com, and we should say it's C H E E F dot com and check it out. So you have two sets. So if a show says seven to nine, it means seven and nine PM, two sets, correct? Um, seven to nine would mean a set at seven and then a set at eight. Oh, a set at eight. Okay, got you. Okay, okay, okay. So you can stay for both sets, one set? Uh, it doesn't... Yeah, we, yeah. Oh, so we, we, only do a, we only do a cover charge on the weekends, on Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. And yep. there's, only, there's only one cover charge to get in. So if you want to stay for both sets, stay for both sets. Gotcha. There's one cover charge. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, on Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, is, we do a suggested donation to the day. Nice. So yep. you can pay pay what you want. We suggest everyone puts in twenty bucks for the band. We feel like that's a like a, a very low price considering what kind of talent you're getting. Yeah, yeah, world class musicians, absolutely. So, yeah, wow, wow. Well, listen, Ian, I know that you are like busy, busy, and I don't want you to stress and like have to go from talking to me to on the stage, which is what you're going to do. What else do you want to tell the public about Uncle Chiefs and um, and yourself, actually? Well, I just want everyone to know that 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 we're your neighbors. That we live in the Hudson Valley. We live right in Brewster. My wife Jenny and I, um, and that, and then we built this place for you. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. Like it's we we did it because we believe in where we live in. We felt like it, the area deserved something like this, and um, it's just amazing to see the reaction so far. And if you haven't come to see us, then I, I urge you to come by and say hi. Yeah, make a reservation, and uh, you're playing this Thanksgiving weekend. I do believe that is right next week. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wonderful. Awesome. All right. Well, listen. Um, like I said, I'll be talking about Uncle Chief. I'm going to dedicate the rest of this hour to you. I'm going to keep playing your music because you sent in some really cool tracks. So um, the lowdown is what we're going to play next. Um, and some of these other tracks that you sent, um, just quickly talk about like Up in Smoke. Um, the, the album itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Up in Smoke is my very first record, and um, I have a funny story that goes with that. But when I first started making records, I had this decision in my mind that I was going to name every single album I made in my career after Cheech and Chong movies. Uh-huh. So, so Up in Smoke was my first record, and, and my second record is called Still Smoking. And then I immediately gave up. So, um, so those are my first two records, and. Um, you know, the Up in Smoke is, uh, is dear to my heart. It's, it's, um, it's obviously it's my first record and it is, um, you know, it opened the door for me in a lot of ways. Uh, I met, I met my, um, my dear friend, Corey Weeds, who owns a record label called Seller Live. And he's based in Vancouver, British Columbia. So he started bringing me out to his club based on Up in Smoke. He heard my record and call and just just dry called me and said, Hey, I have a club. Do you want to come play it? And he flew me out there and I played. And that's where I met my wife, who is now my business partner at Uncle Chief, uh, Jenny, Jenny Laracy. Oh my gosh. And, um, oh my gosh. Yep, she was the manager at the, at the cellar. Oh. Um, what a great love story. I love that. It's, yeah. And, and we dated long distance for 10 years before I finally got her to move to New York. And then we got married very shortly after. And we, you know, the rest is, is just, you know, the rest is trail of history. love. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're business partners. So that's really cool. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Unclechief.com. And um, yeah, we'll be watching tonight on the tonight show and um, yeah. Awesome. You know, Jimmy Fallon's from up this way too, you know, that's right. Saga yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm we're, we're in Poughkeepsie. So, you know, it's all one big neighborhood. That's what I call it. So nice. Yeah. I love it. Well, listen, I'm going to, uh, for all you listeners out there, I, I will wave tonight and um, just know that, know that we love you and just come by and say hi. Absolutely. And thank you, Ian, for your time here today. Go kill it tonight with the roots. Have some fun. And thanks for what you do. You make the world a brighter place with your music. So thank you. Keep on keeping on. Thank you, Rita, so much. Yeah. Take care. Talk to you next time. Take care. Bye.
91.3 WVKR Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. Ian Hendrickson-Smith, he is running on the stage right now to start taping for The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, which will air tonight at 11.30 on NBC. So take a look for him there, and uh, he'll be the saxophonist. And uh, better yet, go see him perform live in person at his club, Uncle Chief which is in Brewster, New York. The website, Uncle Chief, S, I'm sorry, Uncle Chief is C-H-E-E-F dot com. And he will be performing there next week on November 24th and November 25th with some world-class musicians. If you missed part of this interview or want to listen to it again, it'll be uploaded tomorrow because not tonight. I won't be able to get to it tonight. We'll upload it tomorrow on the YouTube channel. If you'd subscribe to that, give a like and a follow on the Facebook page under Local Motion on 91.3 WVKR. That would be cool. Let's take a listen to some more music from Ian Hendrickson-Smith. This is The Lowdown, 91.3 WVKR.
91.3 WVKR. Ian Hendrickson Smith. That one's called The Lowdown. And um, yeah. So Ian, thank you for being my guest here today on Local Motion during the four o'clock hour. Um, Ian owns, along with his wife, Uncle Chief, a new venue in Brewster, New York, mostly jazz and blues. And um, check it out. Looks like a really great lineup. Ian will be performing there himself next week on the 24th and 25th of November. You can see Ian and an all-star band playing with him. And a great menu. Reservations highly recommended. UncleChief.com. We're going to keep the music playing here. We're going to play one more track of Ian's. And then we're going to start the five o'clock hour off a little bit early. Stay tuned because we do have a ticket giveaway today. Also during the five o'clock hour, going to be offering a pair of tickets to see Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams, along with the weight band this Saturday night at the Bardavon Opera House in Poughkeepsie. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's take a listen to this track. We started off playing it, but we only got like an, a minute in. So I'm going to play it a little bit longer. This one's called Don't Explain. Ian Hendrickson Smith.
913 WVKR Ian Hendrickson Smith don't explain the name of the track and thank you to Ian for being my guest today he and his wife recently opened Uncle Chief's new venue live music venue in Brewster they're open Wednesday through Sundays reservations highly recommended and you can make them right online at Uncle Chief Dot com and chief is c h e e f dot com unclechief.com they're right in Brewster right off of 84 super easy to get to easily uh, accessible parking ian himself will be bringing world class musicians and playing at his club next week on the 24th and on, yeah november 24th and the 25th so again check out uncle chief Dot com. I can't wait to make myself there, make my way there soon. Um, like I said, I've definitely heard about it. Um, people that have gone and just say it's an unbelievably great venue. So time to go check that out because there's never, never enough venues, right? And we've got a ton, a plethora here in the Hudson Valley. So now we've got in addition to another nice uh, jazz and blues kind of club. And uh, yeah, so thanks to Ian. We'll be uploading that tomorrow, the interview that we just had this hour with him. And that'll be on the YouTube channel. If you consider subscribing to that, that would be really kind of you. Again, it would be Local Motion on 91.3 WVKR. And it's almost 5 o'clock. It's 4.54. So we're going to start off the 5 o'clock hour now. And when we start off an hour where we don't have a guest, we pay tribute to the late Tony Falco. Many things he did for us in the music community, but one thing that um, he definitely did is he opened up this incredible music venue called The Falcon in Marlboro. And um, he also left a really cool couple of playlists. So every hour that we don't have a guest here on Local Motion, I start off by playing a track from Tony Falco's playlist and you never know what you're going to get which is so cool I don't look ahead I go in order and it's just I I, I really don't I don't look ahead to see what's next and and it's just cool because sometimes uh, the music that I'm playing from Tony's playlist I haven't heard it before or I wasn't familiar with it or I hadn't heard it in a really long time so it just gives me a few minutes every week to reflect on the life and the love of Tony Falco Let's take a listen to this one from Tony's playlist. You'll recognize the song, but it's not done by who you think it is. This is a track by The Meters. Let's take a listen. 91.3 WVKR.
91.3 WVKR, Independent Radio, Poughkeepsie, New York. We call him Jimmy V. Jimmy Vivino and the Black Italians is the album is called 13 Live, the track from Buick 6. Jimmy Vivino was the music director for the Conan O'Brien show for many, many years and has played with a plethora of great artists and continues to do so. And right after... This show is over. I'm going to be heading over to the Falcon and checking him out live tonight. I think the show is sold out, um, but you can certainly always give them a call. And if somebody doesn't show up, uh, it's a, always a great show. Jimmy Vivino tonight at the Falcon in Marlboro. If you're not familiar with him, check him out. He is one hell of a guitarist, blues guy, and um, knows music like it's nobody's business. That's for sure. Um we got this hour, well, I should say now, it's 5.02 p.m. You are tuned into 91.3 WVKR, broadcasting live from the beautiful campus at Vassar College. I'm your host, Rita Ryan, here each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m., bringing you Local Motion, show number 384 for me today on these airwaves. And this show is all about music of the Hudson Valley. So we play music from musicians that are playing here, that are recording here and that just live here so we just heard jimmy v and the black italians and again he's playing tonight at the falcon in marlboro hope to see some of you there and we got started with a track from tony falco's playlist which is how we start each and every hour here where we uh, don't have a guest we honor the life and the wonderful legacy that tony falco has left for us all by the Falcon in Marlboro. He also left a really cool playlist. We heard the meters doing Wichita Line Man. And the album is called Strutton. Strutton is the um, third studio album by the meters. And it's the first album featuring vocal performances. So the meters, Strutton, this was released back in 1970, produced by Alan Toussaint and Marshall Seahorn. And this is one of the only tracks on the album that was not written by them. Of course, which a line man written by Jimmy Webb. And we're going to play the next two tracks we're playing are gentlemen that are playing at Town Crier in Beacon on the Salon stage this Friday. We'll talk more about that and we'll start this mini set off with Bruce T. Carroll right here on 91.3 WVKR. Well, there's a flea on a dog and a tick on a deer, a tiny bird on a big antelope. The rancher is flexing, the farmer's spitting up beer, and the waitress is giving up hope. The tide is broken and the table is scratched, and the leaves blow in from the door. All the words been spoken, all the schemes been hatched, I don't have to be here no more. Oh baby, I'm leaving you, I got a three-day ride to the coast. Of all the places that I've been through, I don't miss this town the most. You got fish in the river, got deer in the glen, wild birds parading the brush. Well, I'll be back, baby, I don't know when. Honey, what's the rush? This was a prairie town when I grew up, amid our heads of dinosaur bones. Now children play in piles of paper cups, plastic straws, and cellular phones. Family tables and friendly bars where I once had a seat. There's fearful calls for building walls and people sleeping in the street. Oh, baby, I'm leaving you. This town has lost its charm. Oh, baby, I'm leaving you before I come to any more harm. They got fish in the river, got deer in the glen, wild birds parading the brush. Well, I'll be back, baby, I don't know when. Honey, what's the rush? So my girl came to me the other day and said, Honey, we've been together 20 years. Ain't it time we got married? I've done my worst, I've lived and died by the sword. 
I finished last and I finished first. I've been a peasant and I've been a lord. Oh, I'm so tired and that ain't bad. You don't live forever, I know. This life is just a dream that I think I had. Now I think it's time to go. Hello, baby, I'm leaving you. St. Peter stands by the gate. Oh, they tell me that the line moves fast and no one has to wait. They got fish in the river, got deer in the glen, wild birds parading the brush. Well, I'll be back, baby, I don't know when. Honey, what's the rush? They got fish in the river, got deer in the glen, wild birds parading the brush. Well, I'll be back, baby, I don't know when. Honey, what's the rush? Well, I'll be back, baby, I don't know when. Honey, what's the rush?
91.3 WVKR David Ray. So I Run. That is the title track of the new release by David Ray. And it's quite the lovely release. I haven't listened to all the tracks, but I've listened to at least half of it. Um, Brand new music, So I Run by David Ray. And uh, joining him on this wonderful album includes some great Hudson Valley musicians, including Andy Stack, Adrian Reju, Jeremy Baum, Brandon Morrison, Lee Falco, Cindy Cashdollar, Rob Sheps, Sarah Milanovich, and Holly McGreary. So great lineup. Congratulations, David. I look forward to getting the physical CD so I can listen to it nicely in full on a CD player. Um, David, along with Bruce Carroll, Bruce T. Carroll, who we heard prior to him, Bruce's album we listened to was First Bird to Sing. We heard the track, What's the Rush? Joining Bruce on this track is uh, Lee Falco on drums and percussion, Brandon Morrison on bass, Will Bryant on piano, mandolin, Connor Kennedy on the electric guitar, and Sarah Milanovic on violin. Some of the same players that were on David's album um, also made it to Bruce's album. This was released back in 2021, Bruce T. Carroll. Both gentlemen, Bruce and David, will be performing this Friday night at the Town Crier, the legendary Town Crier, right on Main Street in Beacon. And for the salon stage, you don't need to purchase tickets. Reservations are highly recommended, and you can do so online at towncrier.com. And that's town spelled with an E, crier.com. Or you can just give them a call as well. Again, Bruce T. Carroll, David Ray, this Friday night on the salon stage. So, yeah. Thanks, guys. And um, it's time for a ticket giveaway, folks. So Saturday night in Poughkeepsie at the beautiful Bardavon Opera House is going to be a magical evening of some great music. The Weight Band and Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams have a show this Saturday, November 18th at the Bardavon, starting at 7.30 p.m. You and a guest We'll be really lucky if you get tickets to go see this. Let me tell you a little bit more about the band, the bands, uh, the musics, the music playing this Saturday at Bardavon. Years of touring have seen the weight band revive the Woodstock sound, keeping the spirit of Americana roots rock alive for audiences of all ages. Performing classic songs of the band, the weight band is led by Jim Weeder, a 15-year former member of the band and the Levon Helm Band. The Weight Band originated in 2013 inside the famed Woodstock barn of Levon Helm. Weeder was inspired by Helm to carry on the musical legacy of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame group. Multi-instrumentalist singer-songwriter Larry Campbell and singer-guitarist Teresa Williams acclaimed 2015 debut released after seven years of playing in Levon Helm's band and frequent guesting with Phil Lesh, Little Feet, Yorma Kalkin, and Jack Cassidy, Hot Tuna, as well as Larry's eight years with Bob Dylan, bring to the stage the crackling creative energy of a decades-long offstage union. So folks, If you're listening, if you'd like to go to the show, please be available to go. Don't just call to win tickets because you're taking them from somebody that really could go to the show. This Saturday night, November 18th at 7.30 p.m. at the Bardavon Opera House in Poughkeepsie. If you want to go to this show, if you can make it to this show, all you have to do is give us a call here now at 845-437-7178. You and a guest get to see some amazing live music at one of the most beautiful venues in the area, the Bardavon Opera House. Tickets up for grabs. All you have to do is give us a call. Let us know that you definitely can make it to the show. Again, tickets for The Weight Band with Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams this Saturday, November 18th. It's a 7.30 p.m. show. Bardavon right on Market Street in Poughkeepsie. And give us a call here at 845 845- 431 I'm sorry 437 7178 repeat that phone number 845 437 7178 
I'm going to play a track now. If you listen to the beginning of Local Motion each and every time, you're going to recognize this song because this is my intro music to the show given to me by Larry and Teresa. Larry Campbell, Teresa Williams were the first ever guests on Local Motion, and I am forever indebted to them. So if you'd like to win a pair of tickets right here, 845 845- Four three seven seven one seven eight to check out the weight band with Larry Campbell, Teresa Williams. And right now, let's take a listen to some music from Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams, their latest album called Live at Levon's. And again, you'll recognize this track, Surrender to Love. 913 WVKR, give us a call at 845 437 7178 for a pair of tickets this Saturday at the Bardavon. 
91.3 WVKR live at Levon's with Larry Campbell, Teresa Williams. Joining them is Justin Gwip on drums, Jesse Murphy on bass, and Brian Mitchell on keys. And the song Surrender to Love, which is our theme song here, is how we start off local motion each and every time. I still have a pair of tickets for grabs. I'm like overwhelmed that the phone's not going crazy. Um, Bardavon, this Saturday, Poughkeepsie, 7.30 show, Saturday, November 18th. You get to see two bands. You get to see the Weight Band and Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. You and a friend can go, courtesy of us here at Local Motion and Bardavon, 1869 Opera House. All you have to do is give us a call here. Obviously, be sure you're able to go to the show. Again, that's happening this Saturday, November 18th at 7.30, right here in beautiful downtown Poughkeepsie at the Bardavon Opera House. Give us a call, 845-437-7178. Now, let's take a listen by the other band you'll see Saturday night, the Wait Band, here on 91.3 WVKR.
91.3 WVKR. Old John by the Weight Band. Their release called Shines Like Gold came out in 2022. The Weight Band joining Larry Campbell, Teresa Williams at the Bardavon this Saturday night. A huge congratulations to Joanne from Warwick, New York who's going with a friend of hers or a partner or whoever, but she and a guest will be going to see the show. So thanks for listening, Joanne, and thanks for calling in. And um, tickets are still available. You can purchase them at bardavon.org. It's going to be a great night of music right here in downtown Poughkeepsie at the beautiful Bardavon Theater with the weight band Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams this Saturday night, November 18th at 7.30. Again, tickets available at Bardavon.org. All right, it is 529. You are tuned into Local Motion. I am your host, Rita Ryan, here each and every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. This wonderful performer just released a new album, and um, she'll be doing a CD or album release show at the local in Socrates on December 1st with Shauna Falana. Let's take a listen to Angel of the Dying right here on 91.3 WVKR.
91.3 WVKR, In Between, the name of the album by The Feelies, the track we just heard, Turn Back Time. They'll be performing tomorrow night, Thursday night, in Woodstock at Colony, colonywoodstock.com. For tickets and info to The Feelies and their great weekend lineup happening almost each and every weekend at Colony. They've always got good music going on up in Woodstock. We also heard brand new album, uh, Sandy Bell, and Teleki is the name of the album. Angel of the Dying Self is the track. She will pr- be premiering this album on December 1st at the beautiful local, the local in Sargates, New York, with Shauna Falana as, uh, joining her as well at this show. Again, Sandy Bell will be at the local. Tickets available at the local Sargates Dot com. Great lineup, great new venue. Um, they've had, oh, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 shows there, and they are getting many sold out shows there. And it's just a really cool vibe and a cool, cool venue at the local. And congratulations again to the winner, Joanne from Warwick. She won a pair of tickets to go see the Weight Band and Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams this Saturday at the beautiful Bardavon Theater. Let's keep the music flowing right here, right now. This gentleman will be making an appearance at City Winery in the Hudson Valley and Montgomery next week. I'll tell you more about it. But let's first take a listen to the one and only Rhett Miller here on 91.3. WVKR.
One, two, three. WVKRJ Collins and the Kings County Band, the album called Rivers, Blues, and Other People, uh, released back in 2012. I love this album. We heard the track called Marianne's, 
And uh, Jay Collins, part of the Midnight Ramble Band, uh, played with Greg Allman for quite some time and all kinds of great people. Little Feet he sat in with um, and a great saxophonist vocalist, as you heard. Jay Collins is doing a tribute to Greg Allman at Levon Helm Studios on December 8th. It's called Midnight Rider. Featuring Jay Collins, Junior Mack, Adam Minkoff, Jackson Concholi, Elizabeth Pupo Walker, Chris Vitarello, Manuel Quintano, Brandon Morrison, Levon, uh, Levon Collins, and Todd Caldwell. So this is happening at Levon Helm Studios. It's called Midnight Rider, a tribute to Greg Allman. And this is directed by Jay Collins, who played with Greg Allman for about a dozen years. So tickets available at levonhelm.com. We also heard Rhett Miller from the album called The Misfit. We heard the track Follow You Home. Rhett Miller, part of the old 97s, was so much fun having him in the studio that time we interviewed him. That was a lot of fun. He'll be playing at City Winery in Montgomery on November 19th. Good old Rhett Miller. Not with the old 97s. He's doing a solo show there. Um, yeah, so that's at City Winery in Montgomery, right outside of Newburgh, right off of, not far off of uh, 87. And it's time for Musical Happenings. This is the part of the show where we go over some of our area venues in alphabetical order, let you know what's happening at them in hopes that you support live music, the musicians and the local venues, and we've got world-class venues right here in the Hudson Valley. You don't need to go to New York City. Right here is where they're at. Let's start off with the Bardavon. Bardavon and UPAC.org. Tonight, Pete Davidson at UPAC. November 17th, Samantha B. November 18th, Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams with The Weight Band. November 25, Lucas Nelson. Bearsville Theater in Woodstock, also at bearsvilletheater.com. December 9, Darlene Love. Uncle Chief in Brewster. Tickets and info at unclechief.com. Tonight, Kevin Burt. Thursday, Brewster's Millions. Friday, Johnny O'Neill. Saturday, Marvin Stam. Mike Holder, Holo Mike Holober Quartet. That's Saturday. Sunday Brunch with Noe Sosha at Uncle Chief. City Winery, Hudson Valley in Montgomery. Info and tickets at info at citywinery.com. November 19th, Rhett Miller. December 3, Slam Allen. Colony in Woodstock and colonywoodstock.com. Tonight, Cool Keith. Thursday, The Feelies. Friday, American Nomads. Saturday, I Get Wild plays music of the talking heads. Sunday, Joel Harrison. And every Monday is an open mic at Colony. The Falcon in Marlboro and live at thefalcon.com. Tonight, Jimmy Vivino. Thursday, Roosevelt Collier. Friday, Tom Freund and Friends. Saturday is Salsa Night with Cuba Rica. And Sunday, the Christine Spiro Group. Fisher Center at Bard College. Info at fishercenter.bard.edu. November 17th to 19th, Fall Work in Progress, Dance and Theater Festival. Jazz Forum in Terrytown and jazzforumarts.org. This Friday and Saturday, two shows each night featuring the one and only legendary David Amram. Levon Helm Studios in Woodstock and levonhelm.com. November 24th, it's the Helm Family Midnight Ramble, an evening to be grateful. December 8th, Midnight Rider, tribute to Greg Allman. December 2nd, Helm Family Midnight Ramble. And December 14th, Ryan Montblow. The Local in Saugerties. Info and tickets at thelocalsaugerties.com. December 1, Sandy Bell album release show with Shauna Falana. December 2nd, Bach Cello Suites for Violin with Johnny Gandelsman. 
Terrytown Music Hall in Terrytown and also at terrytownmusichall.org. November 17th, Peter Yarrow and Noel Paul Stuckey. November 22nd, Stella Blues Band with Soul Shine. Last but never least, Town Crier in Beacon and towncrier.com. Every Thursday is an open mic. Friday on the salon stage, Bruce T. Carroll and David Ray. On the main stage, Gratefully Yours. Saturday on the salon stage, Robert Tellefson. On the main stage, The Dark Horses performing music of George Harrison. Sunday brunch with Eric Puente, Jazz Quartet. Sunday afternoon, Ukulele Invitational on the salon stage. And Sunday evening, Annalise and Ryan present November Night Soundtrack. And that's what I got for musical happenings. I'm going to leave you out with one track brand new sent to me this week by Morali Coriel. And then it's time for Irie Groove with Dr. J. So he'll take over just a little bit before six. I will return not next week because it's the night before Thanksgiving. And Mark Breslaff does his annual, I don't know, four, five, six hour show and takes over the uh, time slot here from Local Motion. So I'm going to wish you all now, for those of you that celebrate, a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for so many things in life, one of them being this show and listeners listening to it. So I wish you all a very happy holiday. I will return two weeks from today with recording engineer Dan Goodwin. So stay tuned for that. Please give a like on Facebook, subscribe to YouTube, Local Motion on 91.3 WVKR. Happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you in two weeks. Until next time, I wish you peace. And this one's Take it off. Morale Coriel.